tell you what, sometimes your timing is perfect. I received a really nice letter from Pippin and Hal asking if I could show them how to make Coco Van. Now on the last episode, you have to excuse my vocal faux pas. I think that you know exactly what I mean. So, we are going to do Coco Van. Okay, it is a classic. And it couldn't have come at a better time because it's VE Day. So it's perfect to make a good old dish. Okay, so, I advise, if you have it, have a cast iron pan. It holds the heat really well. Okay? If you haven't, then a good quality saucepan, because you're going to be using a lot of alcohol, unfortunately, and it won't be going inside me. So, we start off, okay, with the pan. We have seven shallots peeled but left whole. We have 150 grams of smoked lardons. Don't forget to pronounce the L. One sprig of flat leaf parsley. Three large cloves of garlic, roughly chopped. Now this is called a bouquet garni. Okay, it's used to give a good flavour to sauces and to dishes. And at the end of it, you can take this out. We have some tomato puree. You have 150 ml of chicken stock. You have five skin on chicken drumsticks and 600 ml of a good quality oaky red wine. And then the hardest bit of all is some brandy. It's going in the drink and it ain't going in me. Right, so <clears throat> we start off on the heat. Okay, you want a fairly good heat in the pan so it will heat things through. Okay, so I'll use spoons so that you can kind of get an idea. Okay, so you want one teaspoon. You want the anti me olive oil. That's right, it is extra virgin. Okay, well, cool. at a first, it won't come off in the end. Oh, come on, you. There we go. So, get out the nice green pot if you can. Unfortunately, I've got hands like spades. So, unfortunately, it's very hard for me to actually squeeze it in there. So, you want two teaspoons of olive oil. And in the pan. You want to add your shallots first. Make sure they get well coated. Now save these bowls because after each ingredient is cooked it will be put back inside and put to one side because this is a dish that takes a while to cook so you're actually helping it to pre-cook first. Okay, so see if I can find what I'm after this time. Most probably not. Aha! Found it. This is a wooden spatula. Much better to put the spoon because it has a slight edge on it. So things stick and actually remove them. Now, 
Once you start to get hot, turn your heat down. If you don't, it'll spit and you'll end up with scars like me. Okay? You, even though that, I think that that's spitting is awful, but there we go. I don't ever spit. Okay? Allow them to slightly brown off. Okay? The ingredient next will be your smoked lardons. Don't forget to pronounce the L. And then, and then it will be the garlic. So basically, what you're doing at first is, is, is that you are infusing the oil with the flavours of the shallots, the lardons, don't forget to pronounce the L, and, and the garlic. Once they've been cooked up and put back, you then put in your chicken. And that will then start to take on the delicious flavours. Okay, Lindsay? Okay. Delicious. Well, all, all you know is very, very, it's, it's very naughty. Why? It's spitting. Now, some people, after it's all done, will allow it to simmer down in a pan. I'm going to use my slow, my slow cooker. It's far, far easier, and there's far less chance of being burnt. Okay, I'm sure that everybody has one of these, even if I am posh. As you can see, they're starting to brown up. So, in about another two minutes, I'll, I'll be taking these out and I'll be adding in the lardons. Okay? Now, as they're on, can you guess what time it is? I bet, I bet you can't. Shout it at your laptop or at your, or, or at your computer. Well, guess what? You're wrong. Time for the red wine. Lovely. Always face the chef. Mm. Oh, it's like silk. Delicious. Woo! That was snap, crackle and pop. Okay, so. We're going to take these out now and place them back in their bowl and keep them to one side. Okay. Turn the heat down because this will now spit a lot. Okay. And again, allow it to all the smell. At least you can smell this off. Oh. It is delicious. No blood on. Now, once again, allow them to slowly brown off. Now all the fat and the juices will now come out of this and infuse with the with the oil that already had in the shallots. Okay? Now this won't take long. Because they're quite thin. Unlike me. Can you that? It's really good that you came at the time that you did. I was just sorting through my unmentionables. How on earth you can call those, uh, those things small, I don't know. Okay, now as you can see, it's starting to firm up now. Okay, which means it's time to take this out. Okay. Make sure that you leave the juices in the pan. Very important. And try to make sure that you get as much out of it as you can. Okay, there you go. Now, oh, now you add in your garlic. Okay. Now this 
You don't want this in for very long because it will start to absorb all these lovely juices. So you just want it to release its, its flavour and, and then out again. Okay. Again, take your spoon, you want to get this out and place it back in. Oh, if only if you could smell this. It smells delectable. So, now it's time for the chicken. Now, as you can see, I am using tongs. Because it's very, very important with chicken not to cross contaminate. Okay, chicken contains an enzyme. Now, if it's not cooked properly or if it's not properly removed, it will make you poorly. Okay, now I use both tongs as they went in. They are now in the. I'm now using a completely specific set of tongs now and all you want to do is you want to brown these off in these delicious juices okay now now for the hard bit the branding now don't worry if there are some flames we want to basically deglaze um, the chicken. You want two, two teaspoons. Okay? Any more, and it could cause a real problem. Now, in the book, it will tell you to use skinless chicken. But I think that all the flavour is actually in the skin. So I tend to leave mine on. Okay? Okay, Lindsay. Okay. Okay. Okay, now, you see the skin is starting to change colour. At this point, you want to turn on your slow cooker and you want it on high. Okay? Move it there. So, are we ready? Don't be afraid if there are some flames. just burnt off, okay? Leaving it a lovely flavour. Now, take your 600 ml of red wine. You want to add about 100 ml. Okay? Turn it down. Okay, Lindsay? Okay. Allowing the pan to slowly cool. Oh, what a lovely smell. Now, while that's on, add your ingredients to your slow cooker. Making sure they always leave your workspace clean and tidy. the chicken to the slow cooker, turning off the heat. Now 
make sure that any juices that are in the pan are taken out. Okay, now, you now want to add the rest of, of your wine to the slow cooker. Along with your chicken stock. And two teaspoons of tomato puree. Okay. <coughs> now, before you add in your bouquet garni, you want to give this a quick stir. Make sure it's all nicely mixed in. Okay. Okay, Lindsay. Then add in your bouquet garni and add that in. Here we go. And place on its lid. Now, you want that to cook for in between an hour and two hours. So, you keep this to one side. That is to go on afterwards. Now, after it's cooked, you'll then want some ingredients to thicken it up. You want about two, between one and two tablespoons of plain flour. And the same of your olive oil and one hard knob of butter. Okay, so while this is on, I'm going to start to have this all, all uh, measured out. olive oil inside my butter dish. I have my butter there. So I want about one third of that. Okay. Okay Lindsay. So if we come back in about an hour and we'll see how it is going on. For now, ta-ta! You see all the really nice ju 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 juices are coming out of all that meat. Okay, now the next step is to remove everything from the sauce. Okay. Episode 3, we learned how to make a roux. That's what we're going to make now, is a roux. Because the sauce is far too thin. Okay, so, the first thing we add is some butter. Now don't forget one hard knob. You can't beat one hard knob. Good. 
Oh, it runs thick. There we go. So, that's in. <coughs> and, and on the hitch. Okay. Okay, Lindsay. Okay. And your whisk. Allow that to melt down. As before, melt it down and then you add in your flour to make a roux. And then you add in your lovely juices which can make your sauce. And then I will show you how to plate up the coco van in the, in the professional style. I don't mean at home, I mean the professional style. Okay? Okay, Lindsay? <coughs> Rupert, you need to wash his plate <coughs> a bit better. There we go. That's a nice plate. <coughs> now turn it down because you don't want it to burn. Okay? Nice and gentle. The opposite way of me. Okay, so it's now nicely melted down and take your flour. Gently add and stir and turn the heat off. And don't forget that a roux is a, is a paste. Okay? Not quite there yet. There we go. As you can see, it's starting to turn into a paste. Perfect. Okay. Now, this is where you need a cloth because the sides of your slow cooker are very, very hot. Okay. Okay, Lindsay. And pour it in. Yes, I've just lost a spoon. and start to add a bit of heat to thicken up this sauce. Now, you don't want this sauce to be too thick. Okay? Okay, Lindsay? It's starting to thicken up very slowly. Allow that to heat, and whilst it heats, we will start to plate this up. <coughs> so, you want chicken, chicken, and some chicken. I also want some of the lardons as well. There we go. Now you can see it's starting to change 
colour because all the juices are starting to now meld into one sauce. Looks absolutely delicious. Now I advise that you add a sauce with a spoon so it can be placed exactly where you want it. Now it's not quite hot enough yet. There we go, it's done. <coughs> Always take your bowl or pan to the plate. But be careful not to add too much sauce. Bye-bye.